This is the third video of our investigation 1.4, which we're working on page 13 in variables and patterns. And what we are looking at right now is we're looking at parts C, D, E, C, D, and E. So on video two, we basically started completing the table. And as you can see, for the start of this video, we have completed the table. And what I actually did was I carried it, I continued to carry it over to this side, okay? So I did the arrow so you can line up the numbers nicely so you can check this against what you did. And as long as you're within one um, of these numbers, you should be okay, all right? Some of the cases, it's not okay, but for the most part, you should be within one of these values. All right, so part C. What might have happened between hours two and four? So two and... So they want to know what happened in here, okay? So what it looks like, and we kind of gave a hint to this in the last video where I kind of explained what this dip down meant. So it's really no different than that, okay? So they had a bit of a break from here to from one and a half to two. Then they took off then for all we know they could have maybe forgot something back at the two hour mark. So they went back, because we're at the same distance as when we were, so they went back to the spot at the two hour mark, picked up what they needed, and then left again. All right, and it basically took them a half an hour to get back to the same distance, so they traveled a half an hour. So that's kind of how that works. And then they just keep going. So that would be the explanation that I'd be looking for, something to that effect that just kind of explains the dip. Okay, and they also asked what happens between, and this is part C, one and a half and two. So from one and a half, let me change the color. I think I just answered that. So from one and a half to two, right, they took a break. All right, because when it's a straight line, no distance traveled, means they took a break. And here's the other break point. So we have two break points. All right, part D. During which interval did the riders make the most progress? All right, now for this one, what we're gonna do is, let me clear my graph. That was messy. And when did they make the most progress? So what I'm looking for is, where is the biggest gap from one coordinate to the other? that is going up. So one big gap is right there. Um, that looks like that might be about the biggest gap. Now, I'm gonna confirm this by looking at the table. So on the table, zero to eight, that's the difference of they went eight miles. Eight to 11, three. 11 to 21, 10. So that's from here to here. That's actually a pretty big jump. 21 to 21, 0. 21 to 30, 9. 30 to 21, that's actually a drop. Okay, they went down 9. We're not going to worry about that, about the whole negative 9 thing. Just know that it's a drop. So we're not, that's definitely not going to be it. All right. 21 to 30, again, that's 9. 8, 11, 0, 9, 4, 1, 8. So where are we right? Four to four and a half. Is that what we said? We did. Four to four and a half. So four to four and a half is accurate. Okay? That is a change of 11 miles. So they traveled a total of 11 miles within that half an hour time frame. Now the reason why we had to double check is because again, this one kind of snuck up on us from one to one and a half. It doesn't look like it's as big as this one, but when we actually figured it out, 
it's almost just as big. All right. So, when did they make the most progress? Between the hours of four and four and a half. When did they make the least progress? The least progress is actually when they stop, which is zero. So they stopped between, well, where do we have? One and a half and two, and they made another stop. Oh, four and a half to five. All right, so there's actually two stops on this graph. All right, so that's when they made it the least. We're not concerned right now about this drop going down. That would be another lesson, all right, that we'll cover another time. All right, so, so far we've covered C, we've covered D, and E. Which method of displaying the data helps you see the changes better, a table or a graph? So my suggestion to you would be when you're looking at these questions, as you saw, I used both. So my explanation is going to be a little bit lengthy because I'm going to say, well, when I answered this question, I used the graph. When I answered this question, I found the table more useful. So that's the type of answer that they're looking for. If you only use the table, which you could, then you can say that. If you only use the graph, then you can say that. And the last question, F. Use the graph to find the total distance the riders traveled on day two. And how did you find your answer? All right, so the total distance. Now the problem with using the graph is that one, we need to estimate all these values. Okay, let me correct that. The total distance that they traveled that day. They went a total of 80 miles. Okay, so 80 miles is the total distance. However, that's not taking into account this drop. And so that's where the problem comes in. So what actually happens is we would actually take the 80 miles and we have to add on, of course I picked the drop in the wrong spot, didn't I? We have to add on this, because that's not accounted for. Okay, this area right here is almost like it didn't happen if I'm looking at my graph. So, because of this drop, it's not 80, it's actually this dropped 9. So it's actually the total is 89. Now, when most of the kids come to the class, they're going to probably say, oh, the total distance was 80. And then I'm going to ask them, what about this drop? Is that counted in or isn't it? It actually is not counted in. So now you have a little bit of an advantage on those kids when they come in. So let's see who watched the video and who didn't.